Hello, my name is Billy Taylor, and uh, I come from back east, and I moved to Ch I moved to California like. I grew up on uh, several different farms, ranches, and uh, you name it. I grew up on it. I've worked okay. on uh, dairy farms, uh, and like wheat farms, all that. But I've been involved with everything from day one. And uh, ever since then, we've been able to uh, to segment out certain parcels of it to other people. This is part of it, and over here. This is what's left. We already harvested a, a lot of stuff. Some of the mistakes I've done, well, for one, we planted, we started off started this late. year. We started in March, April. March or April? Uh -huh. January. Oh. Whenever, whenever the springs, whenever you're supposed to plant yeah, for too much water on my watermelons, I've learned well, about well, that. Well, so far as uh, uh, after they start getting big, then you regulate the water. If not, they'll get uh, it'll make them split. Well, one of the ways to regulate water is that, like, if you water it quite a bit, all up until it, they start getting like this size here the size here then you start watering it like once every three days or four days so that way all the nutrients go straight to the melon that the leaves and everything are sucking up I'm learning more from people stopping by that we have we had an article in the news the news and review uh -huh. people stopping by and telling us the things that they've learned and everything and plus the internet plus uh, other people's giving me books and I've read and learning that, you know, as we go, as we, I guess you said. People went out. There's my wife, me, my wife, my kid, my two kids. Plus, we share this with uh, Graham and his family, too. Yeah, ever since the article, yeah, there's a lot of people have been interested. Because we've had donations. Uh, I just met somebody this weekend uh, at the at Orville at the Salmon Festival. She works at the watershed, and she, she said that she'd come out and do a... Uh, you know uh, the presentations and stuff, and gives gives me gives oh, us stuff. Now. Always going to be continually building and building and building because we're trying to, in the process of getting the, the city to give us more land. And if we get more land, that way, you know, we get more and more people involved. It's relaxing, it's calming. I mean, you can see your work. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. You can see your everything that you put into it. You, you you can see it grow. You get to eat it. Yeah, you put into it. No chemicals, no nothing. So you ain't got to work. Like when you go to the store, you don't know what's been put in it or how it was grown. But this you know because you put it in it. Yeah, it's, it's like you come in getting in tune with yourself. It's finding one's inner peace. Like the yin and yang, you know, you just... It's a relaxation. A calming, you know, it's calming. Like some of these plants, you got, we got... We got... We fighting them harlequin beetles. They keep coming and eating up the leaves. It's like a steady learning process. Uh -huh. The city giving us more land, I, I swear I see it, that me and Graham and, and Dr. Mark are able to, to cultivate all this through here. That way everybody in Chico can come and different, have different sections for people to garden in. Because oh. that way you can bring more people together. Once you start gardening with people, you, you, you grow relationships, you grow friendships, you know, you grow acquaintances. It's, it's like a flower, you, you know, you're steadily growing because you're sucking up different information from everybody else and you're giving them information. So, it's, you know, it's all beneficial. That, uh, more people should do this. Teach their kids, you know, where, where the, the vegetables and everything come from. And it's more healthy and it's an activity for people to do.